Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here. My name is Sandra Luskin, and I'm the past president of the Newfoundland Labrador Medical Association. I'm also a developmental pediatrician here in St. John's. Joining me today is Dr. Ian Landells. He's a dermatologist here in St. John's. Um, I'm representing Dr. Tony Gabriel, our president, who was out of the country and unable to be here today. The reason we called the news conference yesterday was to highlight the lack of expert input into recent decisions about health care and the potential impact on patients. As you know, earlier in March, the Newfoundland and Labrador Dental Association raised concerns about unilateral changes to the adult dental program, which included caps on basic adult dental services. Physicians share dentists' concerns about restrictions to the program and the implications for patients and for the healthcare system's ability to respond. Without access to adequate dental care, many of these patients will potentially end up in hospital emergency rooms. We feel that this is an inappropriate use of resources and an expensive alternative to preventive dental care. Today, we also wanted to highlight recent cuts in dermatology insured services. On February 28th, the NLMA received a phone call from the Department of Health advising that laser treatment of vascular skin lesions would no longer be covered by MCP as of March 1st of this year. This decision was made without consultation with the NLMA and with less than 24 hours notice to the province's dermatologist and their patients. Dr. Landells will elaborate on this in a few moments. Hours before yesterday's news conference, the Department of Health contacted us and advised that Minister Susan Sullivan was willing to meet with us this morning. As a courtesy to the minister, we postponed our news conference until after we had an opportunity to meet with her and her staff. There is a growing concern in the medical community about the sustainability of the healthcare system and its capacity to function effectively over the coming decade. Given that the NLMA had not met with the Minister of Health since June of 2012, we offered to sit down with her in January to talk about sustainability and discuss ways in which together we might work to address fiscal challenges currently facing healthcare in our province. We were not able to achieve such a meeting and feel that this was a missed opportunity. We have also been at the table with the Department of Health for the last two years finalizing a new fee code schedule for doctors and patients in this province. This would also have been an appropriate form to make changes to existing MCP services. This was another missed opportunity for the government to work collaboratively with the NLMA and with the dermatologist. We appreciate that government is facing deficits and is looking at cost-saving measures. When it comes to making decisions that affect the health of patients, we believe that government should work with health professionals to determine ways to be cost-effective while minimizing the impact on patients. When MCP does not ensure the cost of a particular medical service, the burden of that cost is then the responsibility of the patient. People who can pay for the treatment will receive the treatment. However, patients who are unable to afford the cost of a service will no longer receive it. These decisions may save the province some money, but these savings have a negative impact on a very vulnerable population already facing barriers to accessing medical care. People who are ill and people in low social economic situations are not always able to advocate for themselves. Our role as physicians is to advocate for our patients and for their health. We want to work collaboratively with government to ensure sustainability of the system and as needed to identify potential cost saving measures, but never at the expense of patient care. During our meeting earlier this morning, the Minister committed to further dialogue and further consultation with dermatologists. We also sought commitment from Minister Sullivan that no further changes will be made to any MCP insured services without appropriate consultation with the Newfoundland Labrador Medical Association. The Minister was responsive and receptive to our concerns today. We look forward to continuing a positive collaborative relationship with Minister Sullivan and her officials and to work together to find constructive solutions to problems facing healthcare in this province. We believe that if physicians and government work together, we will find solutions and efficiencies. 
If government continues to make unilateral decisions in the absence of expert medical advice, physicians will be there to hold them accountable. I'd like now to turn um, the conference over to Dr. Landells. Thank you. The last time I sat in front of cameras discussing any health issues was last June with the Minister of Health, and at that time I was praising her for the fact that the government had listened to the medical experts and had followed through on our advice that tanning beds should be banned for those under the age of 19. It was a great move and it showed that their ears were open. Uh, I feel completely different today because three weeks ago I received a fax giving us approximately 12 hours notice that at midnight that night, February 28th, the laser services would not be covered for our patients with rosacea or telangiectasia or vascular marks, red blood vessels, uh, conspicuous blood vessels for any number of conditions including lupus or dermatomyositis or scleroderma or other issues like that. Uh, they're not covered at all as of March 1st. And this was without any notification, any consultation of any kind from experts on these conditions. They unilaterally chose to eliminate this fee without any expert consultation. And I think that was absolutely unacceptable. This was brought up at the meeting today. They did actually acknowledge that this was not handled properly. I, I doubt very much if they're going to bring this fee code back as a result of this. However, they did acknowledge that it was handled improperly because not only were we uh, not consulted, we were given no notification. We had to scramble to notify our patients that those coming the next day or three days later uh, may potentially not be covered for their services. They may have traveled a long distance across the province to attend that appointment solely for that purpose and they would not be covered. Not only that, those children with uh, congenital marks, birthmarks such as poor wine stains, hemangiomas, if they have traveled a long distance to come and see me, they are insured now for laser. However, they now must have prior approval from MCP. So we have to then send records to MCP. They have to be pre-authorized and sent back. So if somebody comes to see me from St. Anthony, they arrive, they've taken three days out of work, the families have, they will need prior approval and will not be able to receive treatment that day as has been the case up until now. So our issue is not that they need to cut back. We understand that we're in a, in a period where cutbacks have to occur. Unfortunately, they seem to be choosing health and education, which to me are two priorities that should be the last things to be cut, but they are being cut. The only issue we have is that this is being done without consulting any of the medical experts, any of the physicians who are involved in these procedures. They are consulting people within their own ranks who really have very little understanding of what they're doing. And the patients, the people of Newfoundland are paying the price. They are the ones feeling the brunt of this. And unfortunately, this seems to be the way they, they have handled it this time. They did listen today. They agreed that they will consult us in the future. Nonetheless, I don't think this fee code will come back, and this is very upsetting for all of us. Thank you, Dr. Landells. At this time, we'd be happy to take your questions. Dr. Landells, there seem to be two concerns. Is, it, um, is there a concern that you weren't consulted, or is there a concern that this was a bad decision to delist this fee services? I think, first and foremost, uh, that we weren't consulted. Uh, I think that's a terrible precedent that if you start eliminating uh, services provided through our, our health care services, that this is being done without consulting the people who actually know what is essential, what is not essential. Uh, this is something that we discussed today. They, they actually openly said that, well, if it, there are medical necessities sometimes, if something is bleeding, if something is, is becoming infected, uh, then, then that's a medical necessity. They, it, it, I specifically brought up that they must consider the psychological impact of having any kind of visible difference on your face or in a visible area. This has tremendous psychological impact on, on people and it can affect their productivity, it can affect the, the cost of the healthcare system in many other ways. They didn't acknowledge this. They said, well, you, you know, anything can be deemed that way. So there, there really is a lack of understanding of how these conditions can impact on people and they really need to consult those who are the experts in these areas. And in this case, that would be the, the dermatologists. And this did not occur. Um, I do also think that they are taking away a service that is important for many, many people, and that we could have perhaps
discussed this with them and looked at ways to decrease the use of laser and to look at specific cases where it would be indicated. Instead, they just took a, bit, a broad stroke of the pen, as I'm sure it was the simple way to say, this costs us X per year. If we just eliminate this, we will save X per year, rather than considering the needs of the patients and taking a little more time to pick and choose the fees and the, the procedures that are being eliminated. So what impact will this change, this delisting, have on patients? It's going to have a tremendous impact on patients. Thousands and thousands of patients are going to be affected by this. They will now have to pay for these services themselves. And for many people, they can't afford it. Some say, well, that's fine. I'll just continue to pay for it myself. Many can't afford that. And that's not being considered either. Can you go over again uh, the types of procedures we're talking about for which conditions? It's laser treatment for vascular lesions of the face, in other words, blood vessels, uh, redness, blood vessels of the face. That, that includes rosacea, which is extremely common. It's, it occurs in people of fair skin, Irish, Scottish, English descent, which almost our entire population is. It's very, very common. We have some of the highest rates of rosacea in, in North America. So they will not be covered anymore. Uh, but in addition, anyone who has blood vessels, visible blood vessels on, on the skin from lupus, dermatomyositis, scleroderma, there are also other conditions. There's a condition called osler weber rondu syndrome where they develop blood vessels, very prominent, visible blood vessels on their face and elsewhere. These are not covered at all under any circumstances. You mentioned Port Weinstein. Is that still covered? That is still covered, but they all need prior approval. So any, it's going to create a great deal of work and hassle for the patients. We have to send our records to MCP, in which case they will then uh, send us back approval, and it is only once we've received that approval that we can proceed with the treatments. And that's for children? That's for anybody. Uh, children in particular, they develop in childhood or at birth, uh, but adults uh, are also covered, and it's covered uh, on the head and neck uh, for, for any age and uh, on elsewhere in the body under age 18. Generally speaking, how much would that set a patient back if they were looking at this type of treatment? It depends on the um, amount that's being treated. For rosacea, it would be about $150, uh, all told. But if you're getting into large birthmarks, it costs much more than that. But they, they would, the birthmarks should be covered uh, if they're on the head and neck. So you had virtually no prior? We, we were given approximately 12 hours notice without any warning, any notification, any consultation, any hint that this was going to happen. Did that, what does that set off? Does that set off a sort of chain reaction where you have to notify patients that they're no longer covered? Oh, absolutely. We, in fact, they also chose a bad time. It was during the uh, one of the busiest meetings, so uh, dermatology meetings, the American Academy of Dermatology meeting. We were all away, so we were getting calls from our office, and we were having to handle this over the phone, trying to notify patients, let them know that they may potentially not be covered. The government did allow a little transition period of three months that if they had been treated uh, after September the 1st, they would be eligible for one, two, or possibly three more treatments. But anyone who had not been treated uh, since September the 1st, they were not covered at all. How many people weren't treated or had to cancel appointments? Oh, uh, I couldn't even possibly come up with a number. Many. And, and the, this is all the dermatologists across the province. And I know this has had a, an impact not just on patients, but the, there are dermatologists who have hired staff just for this purpose and they've lost their jobs as a result of this being eliminated. So there's sort of a trickle-down effect. This is affecting patients' well-being. It's affecting uh, their ability to, to get care for these problems, but it's also having an impact on, on employment in the province as well. Were you in the meeting this morning with uh, Susan Sullivan? Yes, I was. Did she, did she commit to consulting doctors in the future if there's going to be a, something She did. She, she said she admitted openly that this had not been handled properly and that they would, uh, before eliminating any other fee codes, would consult physicians. Why did they say they didn't consult with you guys in the first place? They didn't really explain that. They just said that they decided that this code was a redundant one. It, no other province uh, offered this service for, for certain conditions and they felt that it should go. So they, they felt strongly that this was the case. Nonetheless, before they implemented it, uh, they didn't consult us. She, she didn't really explain that, but they did admit that it was handled improperly. Does this uh, lack, I don't know, does this lack of consultation in these cases, does that, I don't know, is that any different from past practice? 
based on your experience? Certainly in the last year we've had ongoing uh, discussions with the Department of Health in many areas and our, our relationship had really improved and we felt that we were working together on a, a number of very important projects. So it really did blindside us. The only, I guess, uh, concern that we'd had over the last while was that we had asked for some meetings that weren't occurring, and they had been occurring, you know, prior to uh, the last few months. So uh, that was a little bit of, a, I guess, an indication in retrospect that things had changed. Uh, so uh, we were really blindsided by this. Uh, they usually do, actually not only do they usually consult us about changes like this, but we have a process. We're sitting at a table with them now working on MCP billing. So it's an ongoing process all the time um, with give and take on both sides to find solutions that are in the best interest of the patients, but also in the best interest of, of fiscal responsibility. So uh, this, I would think, is certainly a, of keeping with what has happened most recently. Dr. Luskin, you mentioned that uh, well, it is a time of fiscal restraint, I guess the, the government's talking about uh, cuts. Do you expect there will be more uh, uh, services delisted in the coming year? I certainly think that there will be a lot more cuts in a lot of areas from you know any indication. Um, I would think that the government would want to look at some other services. But the government's always, you know, looking at services with us, and we're more than willing to look at those services in the best interest of the patient. Uh, so whether we, we do hope that Minister Sullivan's commitment today is that if they are looking at something such as they have done with dermatology, such a, a broad spectrum, clear cut, that there will be those discussions that she has committed to prior to so that we can uh, lessen the impact on patient care. Dr. Luscombe, uh, in your statement you mentioned that you have some concern about the sustainability of the healthcare system. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? What are your concerns? Well, my biggest concerns come from the messages we're receiving from government. Um, they've made it quite clear in the last number of months that we're in a deficit situation and that there's going to be less money. Minister Sullivan today talked about having 40% of her budget. And uh, if there is less money, then we have to make that money go further. And she certainly uh, alluded to the fact that she was under time constraints and felt that part of the reason why she didn't consult uh, or her department didn't consult with us was that cuts and slashes had to be made and, and it had to be done pronto, kind of. That was the, the feeling we got. Um, but I think that all departments, uh, you know, are going to be impacted. And you only have to listen to any minister speak on television to know that that there are there are restraints coming and that we have to be prepared. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.